Okay, so this is uh, AMC 8 2016, problem number 21, and it's my personal favorite question on the test for this year. Um, why is it my favorite? Uh, it's because there are several shortcuts in the problem which, when recognized, allow you to solve the problem in about 10 to 15 seconds. Uh, you don't need to write anything down. You can do it purely with thought. And so that's why I like this question. But in order to illustrate the two shortcuts or the two concepts that are involved, um, we'll talk about them separately. Um, the first concept is that when you are drawing out the chips, it says that the box contains three red and two green. Chips are drawn randomly one at a time without replacement until all three of the reds are drawn or until both green chips are drawn. What is the probability that the three reds are drawn? In other words, what's the probability that the three reds are drawn first? Because if the green chips come out first, the game ends, and that's the end of the situation. The first principle is one I learned from an AMC 10, and it's that when you're doing a problem like this where a game ends or a situation ends uh, at a particular time when all of one color gets drawn out, be they marbles or chips or games won by a team, then one of the ways that you can do it is to list out all the possibilities, but not stop when all the chips of one color are drawn. So for example, uh, it could go red, red, green, red, green. That's one possible scenario. And we could ask ourselves then, um, which one of them would have been drawn first? The reds would have been drawn first in this case. And so we could list out all of these, and in fact, it's not hard to figure out how many there are, even though it doesn't matter for my solution how many there are, we could figure it out if we wanted to. Uh, how would we do that? Uh, you could do three different ways. You could say there's five spaces, and I need to choose three of them to be red. So that's five, choose three. Somebody else could say, well, no, there's two greens, so I want to do five, choose two, but as we already know, those are both equal. So you have that. You could also call it letters and say, how many words could you spell? And you would say there's five letters, so that's five factorial, and because there's three reds, we divide by three factorial and two greens, two factorial. But in fact, that's just equal to five, choose three, and five, choose two, all of which are equal to 10. So there's 10 ways that we can lay these out. Again, that doesn't matter for my solution, but for other solutions that take a little bit longer, that can be very valuable information. What we want to do is understand what do all the ways, that of the 10 ways, what do all the ways in which the reds get drawn out first have in common? And I don't want to answer right away, I want you to think about it. Um, they're all going to have a certain feature. Let's list a couple more out to see. It could go red, 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 green, green. It could go green, red, 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 green. Um, what's a non-winning solution for red? A solution where, or a method where green wins would go something like green, red, green, red, red. Well, all of these, the reds are drawn out first, and in this one, the greens are drawn out first. So what do the ones where the reds are drawn out first have in common? If you're very good at observing things, you may have already noticed this and are probably saying it, and that's that the green is the last chip in all situations where the reds are drawn out first. So why is that important? It's because we can convert this question of what is the probability that all three reds are drawn to a simpler probability, which is, what is the probability that green is the last chip? Okay, so that's the first concept. We want to know what's the probability that green is the last chip. Okay, then now we're going to look at something else that's really very interesting. And it's kind of a um, probability paradox, if you will. Uh, let's go to a simpler case for a second. Two reds and one green. And let's say I want to know the probability that without replacement, what is the probability that the first chip is red? 
So probability of first shift red, that's going to equal, well, you probably already said it, it's two thirds. That's easy, right? Anybody can answer that. But now the surprising part is, what's the probability that the second ship is red? Think about it for a second. Some of you may already know this shortcut as well in this paradox, but many of you have probably said, well, it's one half. Ah, but what you're saying is the probability that the second ship is red, given that the first ship is red. Well, there's actually two scenarios. There's green followed by red, and there's red followed by red. And you've only named this one. So that would be the probability that the second chip is red, given that the first chip is red. It would be one half. However, the funny thing is that's not actually fully accurate. The probability that the second chip is red is, in fact, two thirds. And that might shock you a little bit, but you can still think about this in the way we can lay out all three of the arrangements in which I draw the chips out. They could be red, red, green, red, green, red, and green, red, red. And if you look at the second chip, it's red two out of three times. And not only is the second chip red two out of three times, but the third chip is red two out of three times. So no matter which chip I'm drawing, it's as if I was drawing the first chip. All probabilities for all positions will be the exact same as if they were the first chip drawn. Let's look at this concept a little bit more in depth in terms of probability. What is the probability of going green-red? Well, that's equal to a one in three chance of the green times a two out of two chance of red, because after you've drawn green, you're guaranteed to get red for your second one. But you have to add the probability of red red. And the probability of red red is two out of three for your first chip, and as you said, one out of two for the second chip, but I have to multiply this together. And so you're going to end up here with one third, and you're going to end up here with one third, and if I add the two one-thirds, you do in fact get two-thirds. So then, this is the paradox. It, it works and applies for any situation, whether there's three chips or five chips or however many, and it's that whether you do replacement or without replacement, it will result in the same probability for any chip. So now we can look back at the earlier concept that we touched upon, which is that the converted probability is just the probability that the green is the last chip. And the probability that green is the last chip is the same as the probability that green was the first chip. It's two-fifths. And that's the end of the problem.